from the back of the box. Shiloh, as Grant was later to say, was the severest battle fought in the Western theater. It was certainly the worst fought on the North American continent up to that time, with 13,000 Union casualties and 10,700 Confederate. Grant would see areas on the battlefield, quote, so covered with dead that it would have been possible to walk across the clearing in any direction, stepping on dead bodies, without a foot touching the ground, unquote. Three armies, and America itself, had seen the elephant. As Grant said 20 years later, quote, up to the Battle of Shiloh, I, as well as thousands of other citizens, believed that the rebellion against the government would collapse suddenly and soon. Then, indeed, I gave up all idea of saving the Union, except by complete conquest, unquote. Fury in the West recreates the Battle of Shiloh. The game begins with the Confederates surprising the Union forces in their camps near the Shiloh Church. Amid much confusion, the Confederates fight their way towards Pittsburgh Landing on the Tennessee River, while the Union forces try to organize some resistance. As night falls, Union reinforcements arrive just in time to finally halt the advance. The second day begins with the regrouped Union forces attacking and retaking the ground lost on the first day. The result is an ideal situation for a game, as players, both players must attack and defend for two players. Fury in the West is unlike any other game on the Civil War. The major concept in the game is straggling. Each time a unit moves, it will lose some stragglers. Each time it remains in place, it will regain some stragglers. A large part of the player's strategies will deal with when to move and fight and when to rest. This is not a game where a player can push his units past their breaking points. Generals have key roles as their presence significantly increases units' abilities to move and fight. Cavalry units can be helpful in reducing straggling. Artillery units add extra firepower. Also included are the two Union gunboats, Lexington and Tyler, which took part in the battle. The game covers the two-day battle with three scenarios, one for each of the two days and one covering both, both days. Optional rules cover night movement, night combat, reorganization, bayonet charges, prisoners, alternate Confederate setups, and hidden movement. Fury in the West is a highly playable game. Much detail has been added to ensure historical accuracy and flavor, but none of this detracts from the game's simplicity. Both sides have an extremely limited number of units to control, and victory will be determined solely by the quality of the player's moves. The game contains a 32-inch by 22-inch mounted map board, 234 counters, one Confederate strength record chart, one Union strength record chart, one die, one playing aid card, and one rule book. Playing time is three hours, Complexity rating from 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, is a 4. And this game is the Avalon Hill Game Company version from Baltimore, Maryland, printed in the USA in 1981.